Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp. I'm here to usher you into the weekend. It is the first weekend in February, which means it's uh, first Friday, in which I'll be talking about the Art Walk, and art guide for you guys this weekend as well, as the Missoula Art Museum is doing their annual auction. It is sold out, but I want to talk a little bit more about how they use this auction to how to keep their uh, art museum, free expression, free admission. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. A lot of news happening this week as well. Uh, one fun thing for sure is that uh, Chat uh, GPT, which is known as the artificial intelligence, have essentially recreated Seinfeld in an ongoing uh, stream that basically is from Twitch user Watch Me Forever, and they intend to basically be playing this AI-generated Seinfeld sketch, and I'll be showing you a little taste of it right after my city council report. But we're going to jump right in. We got a lot to talk about today. Um, uh, even more in the city council where we get some people's reactions to uh, the Higgins Corridor in which how people feel about this mass uh, change in the downtown Missoula area. So let's kick things off with some uh, somber news. Police have been caught in a bad light since last week when a group of officers pulled Tyree Nichols out of his car and beat him and days after his arrest died from his injuries. It was a bad, it was so bad that police chief of Memphis, Tennessee, Cheryl Davis said that the footage was going to be a lot worse than people could have imagined. It was. And while many uh, were worried about the race of the officers involved, it turned out to be uh, five black officers against the one black uh, victim. So uh, a sixth was also charged this week for second degree murder, the sixth officer, officer in question. So it was like five officers were in the act of beating. The sixth officer was heard saying, I hope they stomp his ass. So this is ongoing and many protests have pointed out the fact that the system in place is broken and while individuals can either do great things or terrible things, this is just another chapter written about people who got power and chose to wield it poorly. Nickel service was met with thousands of supporters and Vice President Kamala Harris visited speaking with Reverend L. Sharpton and at Reverend L. Sharpton saying in Nichols' eulogy, there is nothing more insulting and offensive to those who fight to open doors that you walked through these doors and act like the folks we had to fight for to get you through them doors. You didn't get the police department by yourself, Sharpton said. Uh, the death of Motown artist, Barrett Strong, who made many of my favorite songs, Papa Rosa Rolling Stones, has died at 81. I heard it through the grapevine and AP News that as an important part of Gordy's Motown Empire, um, and this is all at the age of when he was 20 years old. Uh, as Motown became more politically conscious of late decade, Barrett Whitfield turned out Cloud9, Psychedelic Shack, for The Temptations, and for Edwin Starr, the protest anthem War, and is widely quoted, uh, War, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Speaking of war, Ukraine got their tanks and the war may take a turn into a faster paced attempt to end Putin's invasion. Many concerns from Western allies has spread uh, uh, spread of the war into neighboring countries, even the Crimea Peninsula, which was annexed by Russia in 2014. So uh, essentially they want Ukraine to defend their territory as much as they can, but in many cases Ukraine has uh, um, seen has been willing to go as far as taking retaking their uh, Crimean Peninsula that the Russians took in 2014. Uh, and so Ukraine could use this to advantage to expand their territory, which Germany, the tank supplier, is concerned this would galvanize Russian people to get in more involved uh, than they already have uh, kind of uh, been reluctant to uh, support this special operation by Putin. But Germany only approved the tanks as the U.S. provided their own tanks to Ukraine, for your information. Ukraine has also asked for F-16 fighter jets in their latest uh, ask of orders. Right now, Russia is dealing with a drawn-out conflict, and if America uh, could stay in Afghanistan for more than 20 years, then what uh, would Putin and his special operation be willing to do? Food for thought, just so you guys know, but let's kind of bring it back to Montana. Missoula Current did a very, actually, this is more kind of like breaking news. I want to jump ahead uh, that uh, there was a massive uh, Chinese balloon that was uh, spotted over Billings, Montana. And, and while many speculated this was a Chinese spy balloon, uh, the Chinese Beijing uh, government came out and said that this was a weather balloon and was caught up in the, uh, the western high elevation winds the uh, uh, the major winds and basically got pushed all the way over here, which isn't necessarily uncommon, but it was very concerning. And so far, that U.S. Uh, security uh, uh, um, attorney general Andrew Blinken was uh, basically make, about to make an unprompted visit to Beijing. So a lot of uh, tensions were a little bit high right there, and. Um, 
Uh, Chinese was basically quoted in, uh, in a statement saying that, uh, let me skip ahead, um, the Chinese side regrets the unintended entry into the U.S. Air, uh, airstrip due to force manure, uh, majeure. Sorry. Uh, the statement said citing a legal term used to refer to events beyond one's control. So that's kind of what happened here and around. Um, another big, th another thing, um, Zill Current wrote an article about the Montana legislature, but that I'm going to get into a little bit more. Um, and, and I think it's interesting about the hypocrisy of the state government, and it also leads the back to the fact that Missoula kind of has its hands tied when it comes to uh, dealing with property taxes, while the state, uh, you, state and federal governments have a tendency to do more income taxes. And so anytime that the uh, uh, city of Missoula wants to uh, use service and stuff like that, it has unintended consequences of raising property taxes, which unfortunately is uh, one of the reasons why many people are having trouble affording to live in the city of Missoula. But before I get into it, we're going to go back into uh, certain uh, sessions in which the Republican-led uh, majority, many of the big issues going to the session was the concept of ban on banning when talking about the single-use plastics ban in our community. The city of Missoula and other communities' ability to govern and ban certain things in their community uh, have been met with uh, state oversight and the state law from 1979 allowed for communities to enact small gas tax that would have been up to the voters. Once passed, it seemed like it came from a disgruntled child who told mommy that this tax wasn't fair. And then that was the reason why uh, kind of like Missoula became like, okay, so this was an old law. And then the Republican majority was like, okay, we got to start, stop, start squanching this uh, to make sure that it doesn't move forward. So there's a lot of things that the state does that would be considered unfair, but the but to be fair, they only meet every two years to set a state budget and pass bills that either uh, been in the works forever or taking a rushed approach to address social issues. Most decisions could easily be made through voting, but at the same time, um, um, this also harkens back to the idea that federal governments and federal uh, control GOP would also use that as a, as a way to uh, um, lessen their powers and have more state control uh, of recent years for sure, just being more about this. And then now the states are becoming a little bit more powerful in regards to how they govern their own um, states. And then now uh, it's the hypocrisy of this particular article kind of points that out with the idea that you know, the local communities, since, you know, it's more in touch with their communities, um, like, uh, you know, Missoula is very, uh, fairly active in, in terms of many people who are, are uh, part of, okay, I'm, I'm kind of going off script here, but, so just bear with me, and like, Missoula and the Missoula government are uh, fairly close, as close as they can be, without the, uh, without the, you know, couple things here and there. It, it could be closer. There's a lot of things that still need to be addressed in our community, especially coming out of a post-pandemic era in which, you know, city and the folks couldn't actually meet in person. So beyond that, on the federal uh, levels, many GUP have uh, relied on state government to enact regulations and restrictions on abortions after Roe was overturned. Thus, states could enact policies over 100 years old of restricting that so-called access. In common through line has that be GOP controlled states and a weakening federal government that the GOP 101, but now um, that's basically GOP's um, playbook. But now Montana state is taking away power from smaller communities like Missoula. Most uh, great laws are passed from local levels Hence the uh, kind of concept of grassroots grassroots operations, you know, from levels like prohibition in the 20s, which at the time was important, but a lot of great and terrible things come from good intentions. Um, and in many ways, this is also uh, as we're going a little bit more into abortion talks and everything like that. FDA last January approved a uh, over-the-counter abortion care as through the Federal Drug Administration to supersede state's authority to ban things like day after pills and Plan B. Uh, the FDA over a month ago allowed pharmacies to sell FDA approved drugs, which include these pills, which uh, this was also part of the FDA's attempt to avoid the in-person requirements for these pills, which was approved last January. So it just kind of happened right then and there. And um, the Save Moms and Babies Act was a, uh, a bill that was just introduced onto the uh, the uh, the federal level HR it's a house uh, uh, so it's HR uh, 427 which is which was the Save Moms and Babies Act which was introduced uh, January 20th of this year among many things newly GOP controlled House investigations into uh, Democrats have now also began so on Wednesday 
So I'm jumping all over the place, but just kind of bear with me. On Wednesday, House Rural Republicans held their first set of hearings launching new oversights into the Biden administration and Democrats. They spoke about uh, Biden border crisis, which essentially at this point, the whole border crisis is basically been ongoing for like 20 plus years. Pandemic relief money and mismanagement, which is a, a definitely a big deal in terms of how uh, the money has gone through the PPE program. And if you have heard some fraud um, kind of deal behind that. Stimulus checks, um, also just look into a lot more and which some organizations have been caught taking more than they need. Um, for so this is from NPR a push from hardline conservatives led to a formation of a new select judiciary so sub panel uh, uh, you know word pasta right there for sure but on the weaponization of the federal government so they're looking about how the misuse of the federal government went to go against you know former president trump and certain um, avenues along that way another uh, committee uh, being floated into the classified documents in terms of former presidents and vice presidents holding on to documents with sensitive data so i'm sure you've heard um, I mean, one of, uh, I'm sure we've seen the interview with uh, former Vice President Mike Pence responded to the documents after Trump and Biden, Biden's classified document scandals. And, he, and his, uh, when he was basically pressed on that, he didn't actually know if he had those documents at that time, which eventually he would. So his face went from no, maybe, not sure, to he just flat out said no uh, in response just before the documents were revealed that he had some of those classified documents. So this is kind of like an overhaul kind of deal of mismanagement of power, just like unilaterally across the board. And so, you know, the, 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 uh, I also love the Joe Biden response. These documents were saved in his garage next to his Corvette. Um, yeah, and so that, that's kind of what's happening in and around the uh, United States and more. Another uh, kind of like a... Uh, in my personal opinion, I don't want to get too much into this, but Bernie Sanders was basically appointed to the Sen um, Senate uh, committee to basically oversee health care, education. And, you know, and, and Bernie has always been an advocate against big pharma in terms of health care. So this is going to be interesting. And you know he's not doing his job right unless he gets basically booted for that committee within the next couple months. So you, you'll see that uh, happen for sure. And that's just my opinion uh, moving forward. But up next, we got some Saturday drop-in videos for you guys, uh, followed by a spring break promo for our kids camp.
Hello humans, are you looking for a creative outlet for your children? Kids get to let their imaginations run wild in stop animation, live action, or blend them together. All sorts of wonderful things. Sign up online or call for more information. For five days in the middle of spring break, we will have a camp at MCAT. You're not doing anything, you're just pretending to do stuff. Welcome to the world of employment. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's jump right into some um, pre-critic where I pre-judge a movie. I almost forgot the name of my own segment that I've been doing for oh, well over a couple of years. But anyways, we're going to jump right in. Knock in the Cabin is a movie that's coming out by uh, director M. Night Shyamalan, so you might as well just pass at this point. Um, next movie is 80 for Brady. Uh, uh, okay, fine. I'll, I'll just go back to it. Fine. Enjoy yet another film about a family who is forced to make a difficult decision that has larger implications than choosing between plucking out your eyes or seeing one of uh, M. Night Shyamalan's movies. Enjoy a film or not about a director trying to play Would You Rather in a type of film that f would find a place at Blumhouse Films, but not the good ones. Kind of like Truth or Dare or Fantasy Island, but horror film. Watch the guy who played uh, Drax in Guardians of the Galaxy convince the audience that M. Night Shyamalan is still relevant. Sometimes I get a little harsh, but 80 for Brady. Hey, you like uh, Tom Brady? Not if you're, uh, you know, not if you hate the Patriots, but um, enjoy uh, much of these ladies. Enjoy uh, double entendre as these ladies are 80 and Tom Brady's number is 80 as well. Just kidding. It was number 12. I just wanted to mess the, with the Patriots. Just kidding. Again, uh, he w went to play with the Buccaneers to show <laughs> Belichick and fans that he was a winner no matter what team. And he was. Cool. Enjoy a fan club uh, looking to meet a man while he was playing for the Patriots, making the people of New England hope he would ever come back. Um, it's nice not having an NFL football team in Montana. No loyalty, pride, proximity. Also, for your mothers out there, this is a nice follow-up to the Netflix cancer with Grace and Frankie. Uh, for those uh, two others from West Side Story and the mom from Mrs. Doubtfire in this movie as well. So yes, seasoned older actors not going for one last ride, robbing a bank, going to Las Vegas. It's, it's more about just women just wanting to meet Tom Brady and living their lives. You know, it's always like for guy old movies, it's like, oh, this is the end, the one last ride. But for this, it's more just like, hey, we're gonna have a fun uh, road trip and adventure. And you know, nobody has to die. Yeah, that's what I like about him a lot more. Moving on, we got a video game, Spongebob, Sp mm. SpongeBob The Cosmic Shake. While uh, the show pumps out about two or three new episodes a year, they still do that. I, I swear, uh, still, I, I, I'm just as surprised as you are. They put some effort into games, and this game kind of follows the 3D platformer model of going into diverse places and fighting enemies that spawn out of uh, the get old real fast category, but generally have the same move sets. Join SpongeBob and his pals as they cross time and space and try to fix Bikini Bottom with nothing but an annoying sponge and the tools you've seen on his show. This feels like a game that is one and done playthrough and with plenty of BS tasks that will keep you busy for 10 plus hours, more than the two to three hours of the campaign. All right, so those are your uh, movies and things that are happening this week in media. Just uh, There's a, probably a bunch of other things on streaming services because there's always like uh, 500 movies that are coming out as well. There's a couple of 2022 movies that are coming out this week, which I kind of bypassed for things here and there. But up next, we have a uh, pretty long uh, dub and stuff. Uh, I was kind of like when I recorded this um, from archive.org where I get a lot of my um, public domain movies. Um, yeah. Um, it's uh, enjoy about a four minute and 14 second video uh, from the 1934 film Through Traffic. Excuse me, I'm from Oregon. We don't pump our own gas. Hold on a minute. I'm running as fast as I can. Skippy, fill her up. Get the premium plus. I'm not paying for this. Oh, so you must be one of those Oregon princesses. I mean, no offense, but your family probably established the port. Well, port technically, we founded Astoria, but that's another story. I have a lot of things I got to do. I'm actually here to pick up my dad. He uh, dropped his truck off here, and he wanted to get a repair. Oh, I can see the resemblance now. It's the goat side. <laughs> well, you should come over. We're having a party later. It's going to be really fun. We got clowns, pinatas, and all sorts of champagne that we can all enjoy. What do you think? You would invite me? Well, of course. You seem like a nice guy. Let me go find the invitation. Hmm. Well, can you memorize this? Here's the address. I mean, this is just happening way so fast, and... I know, and your grammar is abysmal. That's what I like about you. But you barely know me. No, my daddy gave me a rundown as soon as he met you. He called me on the payphone, and he was just like, Whoa, this guy's really cute. You should just date him. 
and marry him and get out of my house and all sorts of things. Oh, speaking of which, there he is right now. Are you sure he likes girls? Well, I can say from experience, he's not much of a guy's guy. <laughs> <laughs> what are we laughing about? That does not bold confidence. Well, Mary Lou, what do you think about this mechanic guy? He seems pretty nice. He's pretty good looking, pretty put together. I don't know. Help me out, will you? He makes good breakfast. I'm going to choose to ignore that. Is the 48-gallon tank full already? It is state-of-the-art. They have some guys siphoning gas as we speak and just to pump it back into my car. Yeah, we use garden hoses to siphon gas. That's what we call ourselves the, the garden, garden hose, hose state. state. <laughs> yes, Daddy, I know that. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. Well, uh, yeah, I guess so. That seems right. Oh, please, let's just change the subject. I met this nice man and I invited him to a party. Don't you think that's cool? It'll be fun. But that's our daddy-daughter date. Um, uh, well, Daddy, it would be okay if we just kind of, like, invite some more people. Perhaps, you know, this guy here would be more than suitable to, uh, you know, hang out with us. It'll be a good time. I promise. It'll be great. He seems really nice and seems really cool. So, um, uh, just please, just, uh, don't look at me like that. I'm, I'm trying to, uh, he's gonna be great. I haven't spoken like a jabbering fool since I met her mother. This is great news. Well, don't get your hopes up. Because I don't even know this guy's name. You hear that? Well, uh, um, but... Oh, and don't expect me to be pawned off onto some next guy at the next gas station we go to. You do this, you do this every time. Seriously, it's getting old. You find a mechanic, and if he's competent in his job, you always call me down here, and then expect me to marry him. <laughs> um... Uh, no, that's not what I do. That's crazy. You're crazy. Oh, Daddy, you know I don't like making a scene. If it means anything, I do think you're cute. Oh, honey, read the room. Hey, did you fill it up? Sure did. Oh, great, thank you. Oh, we're having a party. You should come. It'll be great. Uh... Oh, I'm still invited, right? Huh? I gotta go home and feed my stamp collection. Oh, maybe next time? Uh, we'll see. Oh yeah, I have a stamp collection. Perhaps maybe you can see it one day. It's really great. It's very big. It has all the stamps from uh, Lincoln, Washington, and all sorts of Benjamin Franklin type stuff. You'll be really happy to see my collection. Oh, uh, I do like stamps. Oh, that's strangely convenient. <laughs> I assume you want me to buy a bunch of stamps. Here we go again, boys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am in the market for some new stamps. Perhaps we can trade. Oh, but First, you have to make me breakfast. Ma'am, I don't like what you're insinuating. I don't think so. Hmm, that's weird. I didn't even take it into the mechanic. Why is it broken all of a sudden? <laughs> welcome, well, to welcome to Holden and Holden, 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 Holden Auto, Auto detail. detail. Dude, we gotta sync up better. Yeah, we'll get it right next time. Well, that dub and stuff definitely has a theme, which we're going into in our next category with your city council report. So in city council, they're going to be talking, yes, more about the Higgins Corridor. And we have uh, Jeremy Keene talking a little bit more about the uh, uh, numbers and the funding for this particular project. So we're going to jump right in uh, to Jeremy Keene, who is an engineer for the city of Missoula. So this is what he had to say. Um, this is really the tail end of about a 20 month process dating back to May of 2021 when we started to look at Higgins and really um, 12 years of downtown planning. Um, and what's driving the schedule and the need for a decision today is really an opportunity to seek funding. Um, the bipartisan infrastructure bill is really an unprecedented, unprecedented opportunity to bring funding to our local projects. And we saw that this week with $9 million for South Avenue. And um, we think this is another opportunity that we could try to take advantage of. All right, so that was Jeremy Keene talking about the Higgins Corridor project, which is going to be a massive project in the downtown Missoula area as well. This is not more about just reducing lanes, but making downtown a place to slow down and take our downtown area into the people's place. Um, uh, plus, Aaron Wilson, project manager for the city, uh, notified the closure of Higgins saw normal flow of traffic regardless of lane reduction and closure and overall would uh, pre uh, present better paths and easier left turn lanes during peak hours, especially between the Brooks and the uh, 3rd Street kind of strip area. So it's interesting. Uh, Jeremy Keene talks about uh, a little bit more about the traffic in relation to uh, some of those, um, let's see. Uh, let me find that quote. Okay, here's Jeremy Keene talk about uh, some of the uh, um, some some of the traffic and some of the traffic concerns. 
I think really the question is more about how are we going to grow, and particularly in downtown. Um, you know, in the 90s, we widened Reserve Street, and shortly after that, it was congested again. We've been working on Russell Street for over 20 years. Um, by the time we're done, it's going to be a $100 million project. Um, it'll take us probably close to 30 years to complete. It's a little less than two miles of road. So, um, in the Sutupkane area, we, we got about a quarter of the money from federal grants that we need to build out that network, um, the network of roads support development. So, you know, this is a problem that a lot of cities have faced. Um, cities have tried to build their way out of congestion for 50 years, and um, it's very expensive, and it, it frankly hasn't worked anywhere. Um, all right, so yeah, and Jeremy King does continue to go on to talk about many of the projects that are ongoing and uh, consistent, and then this is just a rare opportunity to be able to be part of that. And you know, if you're in California, there's a joke that if there's too much congestion in traffic, build another lane. Jeremy goes on to uh, um, incentivizing choice for cars, which there is room for already, and encouraging folks to either walk or bike. Widening the uh, bike lanes, widening Higgins is impossible because, uh, according to Jeremy Keene, we'd have to start tearing down buildings if that was going to be the case, but then otherwise it would basically be building a highway through uh, downtown Missoula. So that's uh, unacceptable. And Aaron Wilson, project manager for the city, talks about the timeline of this particular project, and this is what he had to say. It's important to, to pull back and and like Jeremy went through some of the bigger picture of why we're doing this project, how it fits into everything else we're doing, um, and, and how we got here. Um, it's it's not out of thin air. It's not something that we developed over the last couple of weeks, um, and a lot of thought and process has gone into it. So I want to talk about some of those pieces. Um, first, just again a reminder on the timeline of this project that that this is not a new concept or project for Missoula. We've been talking about this for close to 15 years or more. So the first time it really came up was in the um, 2009 downtown master plan, um, showed the role of Higgins as the multimodal corridor and spine for downtown. That was carried over into the 2018 plan with some additional detail, um, that update that had a pretty incredible amount of public involvement and um, participation from, from all walks of life in the downtown core. All right, so um, to talk a little bit more on um, um, Aaron Wilson's heels is that, you know, Higgins was also uh, developed on the north side of the Broadway intersection, which is a major intersection in the downtown Missoula area, in which they had a lot of those kind of developments with the, uh, the, uh, the, the transition to single lanes. And just making this more single lane would make traffic a little less, uh, even if it was congested, it would be less uh, of that four lanes of traffic coming on onwards as well. So I'm not necessarily, uh, let's see, um, where was I? I'm going all over the place. Um, um, I'll say it again, Brooks to Bridge uh, will we'll have lane reductions from uh, double to single freeing up left turn lanes during peak hours. Main and front will be uh, turned into the two-way lanes instead of the double threat. Uh, Fifth and Strix, uh, Sixth Street have already been transformed into single lanes and I've had no issue going down the lanes from uh, Higgins to Russell. So in many ways, I think that was a fair, uh, fairly well su a successful transition for a lot of folks. Um, you know, for those of you in a hurry, for sure, it's like it kind of forces you to kind of slow down for the traffic that's ahead of you, which is kind of good because I don't, it, it's kind of hard for people to weave in and out of traffic, especially in the potential of people crossing the street on those intersections that don't have street lights. So Aaron Wilson talks about the parking loss, which is one of the few things that uh, many Missoulians are very concerned about as we uh, are going to be going into public comment. So here's Aaron Wilson talking about uh, so, uh, the, pot the t potential of uh, parking spots lost in the downtown area. So in our preferred concept, uh, we have a maximum of 20 spaces lost. And I say maximum because it really depends on the specifics of the engineering design. And, and what we've looked at are preserving most of the parking throughout the corridor. Um, so we have parking on both sides of the street, north of the river. Um, that design also includes some alleyway access points where our consultants thought those were two-way alleys. We have since corrected that. They're one way. We can. They had adjusted spaces to allow visibility. There's visibility issues when you're pulling out of a uh, if you're pulling out of an alley onto Higgins, and so they had designed assuming that that was going to be the case, which it's not. And so that maximum 20 
um, assumes that there would be some spaces lost to Ali, which we, we don't think is the case. All right, and one of the things that I also want to bring up as well is that uh, the concept of turning onto Higgins. And if you see here, you know, you see there's the crosswalk with, you know, my mouse is right here. You see the crosswalk right there. Traffic would essentially be behind that tree, and you cannot see that traffic. And the only way a car can really see oncoming traffic from this vantage point would have to basically be either in the crosswalk or between the bike lane and the crosswalk in this particular area right here. So that's one of the big things in, uh, that I'm always concerned about just in terms of just having that access for uh, cars to be able to actually see anything when those in those kind of corridors and you know there's just a lot of uh, you know I'm, I'm perfectly fine with boulevards and trees like that but those are like one of my my personal big concerns when you're uh, driving downtown is that you know trees can obstruct a lot of views and especially the freshly planted trees before they actually gr grow to a certain degree where it can actually see through their uh, their stumps so you know as we get further into this meeting um, from what I've saw in the renderings uh, is this a uh, side street parking closer to intersections will be removed which for folks trying to leave and park don't get in the way of folks turning at the intersections without cutting corners like they do on the Broadway in Higgins, which is still one of the intersections that make me sweat when I'm trying to go down. Um, the Parking Commission is also doing a study in parallel to this particular proposal, as Aaron Wilson did, and Aaron um, doesn't also think that the amount of parking solves anything, but management does. So Aaron talks about um, Missoula Comprehensive Map of all the projects that the city of Missoula wants to investment, invest in, not just the Higgins corridor. So this is kind of like a big vision for the uh, transportation uh, master plan. We, we put together this, this graphic to help show all of the priority projects that we have in the region that we're pursuing federal funds for and thinking about how they fit together and how our other local investments tie into those. And you'll see that Higgins and Front and Main are really the core of all of those in the downtown. So they connect to the, the Brooks Corridor BRT project as you go up Brooks and, and out um, with the bus rapid transit. That's going to connect into um, the Higgins Corridor project. Uh, you also have the Highway 200 corridor that we are actively pursuing federal funding for to improve multimodal transportation and, and capacity going out towards East Missoula and Bonner, where we're seeing a lot of development activity. That ties directly into downtown and the Front Main and Higgins projects. All right, so uh, that was uh, um, Aaron Wilson talking about the many uh, prospective projects that are being looked at in the city of Missoula. Missoula Build Project gave Missoula the rare opportunity to invest uh, through phasing, as in the money becomes available they'll build it. Aaron talks about the north of Broadway business after Missoula reduced lanes in response to questions about uh, lane reduction. Um, but we did look anecdotally at that, that, you know, since that project, um, you know, there hasn't really been a vacant storefront and, and the vibrancy and activity in that north section of Broadway has been really good since that reconstruction. And so there's some anecdotal evidence that it has been you know, it didn't have a negative impact on business in, in that section of the corridor. Again, that's aggregate. So I don't, can't speak for individual business experiences there, but. Okay, thank you, I'm all finished. Yeah. Okay, and so yeah, I mean, the, that, the whole area and just on the north the north side of Broadway, you know, you saw those, uh, you know, if, you, if you're in the downtown area, you see those green bike lanes that kind of go in and out of, uh, you know, intersections of traffic. And so far it hasn't been the worst nightmare, even though there's, there have been in my, you know, more anecdotal evidence of me dri driving down the uh, intersections where, you know, a bike could probably come out of basically nowhere as some of the uh, side street parking kind of obstructs the biker that are going down the bike lanes. But perhaps this extension would help improve some of the safety beyond it. But so far, we'll, uh, uh, um, yeah, there's only been a couple instances and in when I had to worry about some bikers here and there. So uh, Aaron Wilson responds to the emergency response time and vehicle access. So, you know, like, you know, I have wider roads and if you start narrowing things down and start blocking things out I mean the roads not gonna get smaller they're just basically technically repainting and maybe adding some curves and um, additional for bike lanes but the whole idea but here's Aaron Wilson addressing some of those concerns about you know fire truck and emergency vehicles obviously we don't want to affect emergency response times um, and I don't think anything in this project would reduce emergency response times I mean downtown's kind of a slow area anyways there's a lot of traffic it's um, but, you know, the first step is to see what, what design changes can we make in the preferred concept to address those concerns and make it as efficient as possible and, and remove those barriers. Um, and then I think from there, you're looking at, you know, trade-offs. If there is a decrease in, in response time, um, you know, what's the benefit you're getting out of the project? And, and then, you know, of course, Aaron Wilson goes into detail that, that they have uh, reached out to uh, emergency services about being able to uh, uh, retain their uh, 
travel time in, in terms of emergency access and timing. So they did open up to public comment and one of the business owners was very disappointed about this proposed proposal to basically remove parking because once you mention parking in the downtown Missouri area, people get triggered. And uh, this, this is Scott uh, Billadu. He's uh, the owner of Pangea and uh, Liquid Planet uh, who uh, straight up rejects this proposal. And this is what he had to say about it. Downtown Missoula has been fighting a negative view of downtown for decades, and the downtown road diet would only amplify that glaring problem. Main point number one, while the proponents of the downtown road diet claim broad engagement, the reality on the ground is that very few business owners, employees and residents of the downtown area knew about this project until very recently. Many are not aware of the project still today. According to the road diet proponents, the number of survey respondents reflect about a half of 1% of Missoula County residents. We suspect that those initial survey respondents are directly or indirectly connected with the project and or the proponents of the project. Point number two, the downtown road diet is being heralded as a solution to an enduring safety problem. The real agenda appears to be the goal of forcing more people to bus, bike, or walk downtown. We have no issue with nudging more people to bus, bike, or walk, but it should be their choice. For most Missoulians and out-of-towners, it is simply not an option to bike, bus, or walk in order to get downtown. Further, there are on average only five reported biking or walking incidents in downtown Missoula, of which the majority do not include injuries. Given the All right, so that was uh, uh, Scott talking a little bit more about that. He uh, went into more about the lack of safety studies and evidence that bolsters the city's views on reducing potential risk rather than actual risk. So far, Missoula is a tourist destination and not having places for people to park and explore downtown could be a deterrent, according to Scott. Travis Matier, resident, talks about the city's uh, building practices in general um, in, 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 in regards to this, uh, this plan as well. Hold on a second. Let me just try to find that. All right, here's Travis Matier. Um, I heard some defensiveness around the idea of framing this as a car versus bike issue, and I think I'm sensitive to that. Um, it might be important to think of it as a people versus infrastructure slash rules dynamic, because one of the things I've seen spending lots of time downtown is the lack of enforcement capacity when it comes to behavior. So I used to um, bike quite a lot. I was actually up for commuter of the year. Um, so I've spent time biking and, and seeing the dangerous behavior of motorists. I've also seen the complete disregard of some bicyclist behavior uh, when it comes to the fact that they're uh, not like cars when it comes to collisions and who's going to come out on top. Um, I also used to work at the Pavarello Center and heard community concern about putting a homeless shelter on West Broadway. And I said, no, 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 don't worry. No, 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 it's fine. And then I've almost hit about a dozen people as they walk into traffic with seeming no disregard for the fact that, again, human beings without body armor versus cars, not going to be a good outcome for anyone. Motorists, I think, largely don't want to be taking out homeless people. Um, and so when you're looking at human behavior, you need to understand that you're dealing with a wide range of human behavior and you have a criminal justice system that can't deal with misdemeanor issues anymore. You can't deal with the road rage issues that might emerge because people are sitting in traffic wondering like, if there's cognitive impairment within the decision-making process here. When you guys are disingenuous about how long you guys have been planning this. We can hear you, we can hear you, no need to raise your voice. Excellent. I'm glad. That's all. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, things definitely get heated when you start talking about uh, infrastructure and building in the city of Missoula. Um, uh, Dave McIntosh, business owner on the Hip Strip, uh, south of Bridge, uh, shares some of his concerns and some of his support towards this project. We had the survey crew stop in and talk to us over the counter very cordially and uh we put out some pretty pointed questions but they couldn't really tell us exactly what they're going to do on the hip strip and so i'm thinking well okay so do we have a drawing of what this is going to happen and i remember seeing a couple of drawings like last spring and it looked like they kind of had a plan together, but they said, well, no, that's been changed. We don't really know exactly what's going to happen here or when the money is going to be available. And so the, the communication was a little, I don't know, pretty up in the air on the whole thing. So we're, we're still kind of wondering, well, okay, 
um, parking, no parking, bike lanes, no bike lanes. And uh, so we're still kind of up in there on that. Uh, the other thing I want to... All right, so that was uh, um, Dave McIntosh talking uh, in response to that. Um, Aaron Wilson did mention up to 20 parking spots it may have to go with a very soft estimate. It didn't uh, bode confidence with Mr. McIntosh. During public comment, it seems like folks were a l uh, were for the lane reduction, but it was harder to sell them when trying to accommodate parking, which for those of you who don't know, are terrible in the downtown areas during peak and business hours, whether you find parking or just trying to leave the downtown area in general. Uh, Bob Giordano, Free Cycles Roundabout Endorser, uh, speaks about this project uh, in Missoula. Project that's before you, I do think it's going to benefit everyone. A little bit slower driving, but ironically, capacity often goes up when people go a little bit slower. Crashes can go down. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, but the data does tell us that this is going to be good for this for this city. Um, the only place I've been hit in Missoula on my bike has been uh, it's been about 10 years is right in front of 12 years, right in front of Liquid Planet downtown. It was a Doring. It wasn't even reported. I could have been killed. But a skinny bike lane, which is still there today, right next to park cars and the driving lane, uh, it's not good. You, sh you really should not be on that. And we don't even advocate through mist or pre cycles to be on some of our roads. And thinking back to that inclusivity, that's, that's um, I'll just say it's a shame. We want a city that's for all people, but driving, including transit, walking, biking. Um, to wrap up, I think this will be good for placemaking. That's important to this town, inclusivity for housing. We can afford uh, lower costs. People who want to walk and bike can save a lot of money. That helps with the, the high cost of living here. So I'd ask that you support this. And I'm going to ask uh, you consider, um, this might be a more technical question down the road, that we consider uh, changing the some of the intersections on North Higgins. The way the protected bike lane bends you back out into the street, many people don't like that. The intent was good to make people biking to be seen by turning drivers. In reality, it, it's a little bit harrowing to have that not be continuous. So we might want to consider to realize the investment if this project goes forward. All right. So that was uh, Bob Giordano from Free Cycles talking a little bit more about that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, the back and forth, a lot of things going on like that, but uh, emphasis on parking, trying to uh, improve safety for those who wanting to uh, bike, walk or uh, do some basic public transit. You know, like this is there's a lot of things happening as well. Like when I mean a lot, I mean a lot. This is like ridiculous just how much uh, investment and a lot of different things are happening um, in February. The reason why they're uh, be, been pushing this, especially for the last month or so um, in terms of like their concept and designs. These designs are mostly meant for uh, federal grant funding and so they'll hopefully try to get this proposal in uh, and they're going to have another meeting on this I believe on the 15th so that's going to be uh, a couple maybe a week from Monday. Um, I, I wait yeah I think so. Hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll have to think, uh, darn, I'm, no, no, it's, it's uh, another Wednesday committee meeting where they're going to talk, talk more details about this. So I'll, I'll follow up with this a little bit more as well as we get further and deeper into it. But I've, I've spoken so much in length about this. I've pretty much uh, uh, presented this project on behalf of the city of Missoula as well. So you guys can check this out on the city's website, ca.missoula.mt.us. It is their loan meeting for the week. Uh, they didn't have a city council meeting on Monday because it was the fifth Monday of the month, but expect to have a regular City Council report next Monday. Um, up next, we have a fun, uh, interesting uh, video. Uh, this is a Seinfeld generated by ChatGBT, and this is all uh, this is all just uh, AI generated, and it is probably the most ridiculous thing you'll ever see in a long time. And I'm sharing it with you right now. To the bartender, give me a beer. This is live, by the way. <laughs> Without missing a beat, the second guy chimes. Give me a beer, too. <laughs> I guess that's why they call it Unison. That was pretty good, Larry. Glad you liked it. Now it's your turn. Tell us a joke. So what are we doing tonight? I think we should go to the theater and see a funny movie. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, but they all seem to be the same. I know, right? How about we go to the museum instead? Oh, I don't know. That sounds kind of boring. How about a carnival? But carnivals are so noisy. <laughs> yeah, but they're also a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, let's go to the carnival. Great idea. I hear they have some really wild rides. Hi everyone. So I was talking to my friend the other day, and he said something really funny. He said if vegans eat only plants then why do they have to keep going back for seconds? Ha ha ha. Anyways, so the other day I was at a restaurant and the waitress asked me if I wanted something to drink. I said yes, a diet coke please and she said, that's too healthy, I'll just give you a beer. Ha ha ha. Alright, so lastly, I was at the store and I saw this woman who had a bit too much to carry. She was getting ready to check out and the cashier said, ma'am, you can't take all of that. To which she replied, of course I can, it's my cart. Ha ha. Alright, thanks for having me everyone. Hope you enjoyed the show. Have a great night. And that was just basically just the live stream going on currently right now. It's just literally just non-stop it's been going on for 15 hours currently they might have re-upped the stream but for the most part it's it, it is all ai generated uh shorts and you know it, it literally just goes on forever like i i had it on the other day and just kind of left it in the background oh, i was just playing video games and it was just like oh wow this is just definitely happening for sure so all right we're gonna uh, talk about your first friday art guide right now kicking things off is uh, textile translation, they're doing a gallery open at the Zootown Arts Community Center. They're doing a lot of things at Zootown Arts tonight as well. But Western Sensibility was founded by a third generation textile printer to operate at the cross section of art and science. And they honor art and process e uh, equally. Uh, the studio is rooted in the belief that the digital textile printing technology fosters uh, ambitious design. And it's their mission to champion the vision of artists to usher the perspective into your home without compromise. Uh, based in Missoula, Montana, Western Sensibility is the reimagina uh, reimagination of what uh, modern textile printing studios can be. Artist featured in this exhibit is Anka uh, Lavariv, uh, Ano Animal uh, Press, uh, Big Sky Bandits, Courtney Blazon, um, Mickey Haldi, uh, Monica uh, uh, Giselle Brings Yellow, um, Stella Nall, uh, Tyler Kowalski, um, Tracy Lynn Hall, and I butchered most of those names, so I apologize. Uh, then we have Small Works, Big Ideas, uh, focuses on the creation of uh, the, maybe diminutive in size. This is at Clay Studio of Missoula, but they have a commanding presence due to the concepts explored and or technical execution. 52 works by 37 artists were selected from entries through, uh, throughout North America by guest juror Richard Nochtkin. So this exhibit will be open on um, tonight and it'll be going on until the uh, 25th of this year. So um, up next, we have the Artist Shop. Uh, we'll be featuring Remembering Hal, an exhibit of pottery from private collections in recognition of the BLAF member of Missoula Ceramics community, Hal Matthew. He did last summer and started his art career in Salem, Oregon, where he, um, according to his LinkedIn, sold books and some of his uh, ceramics too. And the show runs from February 1st to the 28th. Um, and that will be at the artist shop. Uh, this one is On the House Clay Nights Wildfire a, a Ceramic Studio. Gallery will be also featuring our uh, consignment artists until 9 p.m. And this is going to be at Wildfire. So you got to get a taste of there. A lot of uh, these posts don't um, show much, too much detail. But uh, this next one, I had to kind of uh, dig from some information from their uh, auction book. And this is art by John Buck. And this is just one of the many artists that will be auctioned off this weekend um, on Saturday, February 4th. Um, this ticket's already sold out for people who want to attend, but I also wanted to mention this is one of their bigger money-making uh, money ventures, Missouri Art Museum auction. Um, 
Um, I mention this because this is one of the biggest money-making events. Um, you can see these pieces and more by going to museumartmuseum.org for more information about these artists and artists as well. So, yeah, there's just a lot of uh, great stuff with that. And we're going to jump right into your events as we jump in. So if you're interested in actually learning in Excel instead of faking it on your resume, Lifelong Learning Center offers a, 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 a series of classes presented by Lifelong Learning Center that is good for all those looking to pay per class or even host a class in the type of night class for additional training for all sorts of things. Welding is a big one too. So. Um, metalworking and all that kind of stuff, it's a good, uh, and you can get certified in welding, which is kind of a big deal. I mention this because welding, um, from what I know from a couple of my friends that got into it, uh, were able to easily make six figures in this trades work. So trades work is a big deal, and it's, uh, this is probably like the, uh, the easiest stepping stone to get into it. So stroller strides, mommy and me workout class, um, there's the 930. Um, if you ain't too cold, a good exercise to work out after you have your baby with other mommies to talk about uh, your children could be. Uh, Missoula Food Bank, meal distribution at starting at 10 a.m. opens most times at 10 a.m. and offers food, food for low income and to those more frugal spenders in this community, bridging services in Missoula and beyond through the Missoula Food Bank model. Missoula uh, Family Fun Time at the YMCA. Um, this is indoor exercise uh, for your kids and family and need I say more? Tiny Tales and Storytime here at the Missoula Public Library on the second floor. It's a great opportunity for kids to learn to read and stuff. Um, yarns and Watercolor are at noon on the fourth floor. And you know yarns if you want to um, stitch and crochet around a bunch of people who do it as well. Or you can do watercolor with Rob P, building manager here. And he basically kind of uh, leads a class and about painting and just improving your art skills. Lego Club, um, 2.30 p.m. Uh, this is going to be at the Lego uh, second floor, usually in the art art box or the imagine imaginatorium um, and that's uh, yeah it's a regular Lego club they meet most days in the afternoon at 2.30. Young Adults Writers Group is happening at 3.30 at the art box second floor for aspiring writers. Teddy Bear Sleepover and Ice Cream Breakfast. This is the cutest one here and it's hosted by Families First Learning Lab and starting uh, from 4 to 5 p.m. in the Imaginarium Public Library. Bring your fluffy best friend to the library for a fun space activities with Spectrum, a Families First Learning Lab exhibit and weather permitting sky gazing with the Western Montana Astronomical Association. If you want leave your friend overnight and pick them up the next morning because the next morning they're going to be having an ice cream social from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m and you'll be able to have some ice cream breakfast at the art box. So that's going to be fun with that. Full Moon Ski Event, Lolo Pass Visitor Center is doing a Full Moon Ski Event. It is the full moon. Join the Lolo Pass Visitor Center for another night of live music featuring a local band, the Pack Strings, a cozy atmosphere, a telescope to view the moon and planets, and the ability to make serene moonlit trips around Lolo Snow Pass Trail System. All right, so parents' night out. Hey, it's first Friday, and you want to drop off your kids somewhere. YMCA is hosting a parents' night out. 5 p.m., you get to drop off your kids. I believe it's $35 for the first kid and like $20 per kid after that. You might want to look this up online as well, but this is a nice reprieve for a lot of parents looking to uh, have a date night. No Man's Land, The Liberty. The artist uh, uh, Marcy James is going to be at the Missoula Public Library from 5 to 7 p.m. February's National Library Lovers Month kick off the month of activity celebrating all the libraries have to offer with the first Friday reception with Marcy James and her exhibit No Man's Land, The Library. Adora Laurel, uh, uh, um, owner of the uh, Vesperi Book Restoration and Binary, will provide a drop-in bookmaking demo. Tours of the world's best public library um, will also be available. Reception sponsored by Friends of the Missoula Public Library. There's going to be a Drake show tonight. It's going to be Disney themed and it's going to be at the Zootown Arts Community Center starting at 7 p.m. So uh, besides their first Friday art gallery, they're also doing a Drake show tonight. So you guys can enjoy that. Um, Shane Coburn at the Old Post is going to be a multi-genre, so like indie music at the Old Post. Jaden Decker is going to be at Old Post as well um, tonight. Um, uh, 8 p.m. also, there's going to be uh, some rock music, both Psy Doom, uh, the band Repent, and the band Take No Bleep. Um, so yeah, those are going to be rock music. And then uh, almost in the same building, uh, Sunrise Saloon is hosting Jared Hansen and the uh, Sunsha 406. And it's going to be some country music. So you got some hard rock and country, you know. I uh, like it's an interesting bar in Missoula and it kind of reminds me I'm a little bit country I'm a little bit rock and roll and that's basically the Sunrise Saloon and the Dark Horse uh, Saturday 
Winter markets in Orchard Homes is hosting a bunch of uh, farmer's market reprieve for a lot of folks who are interested in trying to find their uh, farmer's market kind of uh, um, um, place to go during the winter time. And they happen from 9 a.m. to about 1 p.m. at the Southgate Mall and at Orchard Homes just off of Reserve Street down third. Um, Montana Master Naturalist is Weekend Warrior, Swan Valley Connections. This is actually a $950 participant. This is a big deal because the Montana uh, Master Naturalist Program is designed for adults who want to stroke their curiosity, deepen their knowledge of the natural world, and give back to the communities in new ways. And so this, is, uh, uh, this includes dinner, lodging on Saturday evenings. Participants are responsible for all other meals. So there's, it's going to be an interesting outing for a lot of folks. It's expensive for sure, but um, it's also for raising money for the Montana Naturalist Program. Dates and topics will include wildlife tracking and introduction to nature journalizing, journaling. Uh, journaling. Um, they're going to do the February 4th to the 5th, May 20th to the 21st, August 19th to the 20th, October 14th to the 15th. Each one is different with wildlife tracking and introduction to nature journalism this weekend. Then they'll have other uh, things that I'll probably talk about um, later on as well. So, And then the continuation of the Teddy Bear Sleepover, going to be at the Art Box. You guys can check that out. Um, uh, family Fun Time, YMCA, yet another uh, an excuse to go inside and get some exercise and get some uh, play time for the, your kids without worrying about the uh, um, uh, the weather as well. So Blooming Silhouette Kids Painting Class, Painting with a Twist is doing a, uh, a painting class for kids. Um, five Pillars of Self Care for the Body Work, Part 1 and Part 2. This is going to be Sacred Root Massage School. They're doing their thing there. Um, Tech Connect uh, Tech Time. So this is for folks who uh, are part of what they call the digital divide, which basically is just uh, people who don't know how to use their technology and or have problems. And this is a way for them to have some hands-on experience with uh, um, people who know what they're doing and help them with their tech. And just you know, come prepared with a question to be a little bit more specific because a lot of times people are a little bit uh, broad when they try to have their strokes and um, they. You know, it's, it, it's hard for a lot of people to understand their phones where they don't even know how to ask the right questions. So maybe this could help you and this maybe not. It just really depends. Intermediate and advanced relief printmaking class. Zach is going to happen at 10.30 a.m. Uh, Saturday storytelling at Travelers Rest State Park, Lolo, Montana. It's also via Zoom. Saturday kids activities, animals in the winter, uh, Montana Natural History Center. MCAT Saturday drop-ins for kids doing stop animation from 1 to 3. Makerspace sewing and mending at 2 p.m. Introduction into Genosis, part 1 of 3. Please the join three-part um, introduction to Genosis course that starts at 3 p.m. Missoula Public Library. This is a program slash classes page. Each lesson is followed by a meditation practice, um, and you can RSVP on their website at missoulapubliclibrary.org. Firefighting Stair Climb, Cranky Sound Public House, Missoula Rural, Fire, Missoula Rural Fire Department will be hosting an annual fundraiser for Leukemia and Lymphoma uh, Society. Firefighting Stair Climb, enjoy the, print, uh, the pint and support the annual Stair Climb. Missoula Fencing, Valentine's, stabbed your, Stab Your Loved Ones, um, Missoula Fencing Association is doing a Valentine's themed one. Event runs from 6.30 to 8 p.m. at the Missoula Fencing Association, and this is uh, $5 per participants, and it's for all ages. Uh, Six to ninety-nine, they say. Revival comedy is going to be at a father and son. Zutan Arts is Center is doing some comedy. Also at the same night, VFW is also doing comedy, featuring Sean Patton live in Missoula. The Missoula Fourth Quarter Society is going to be at uh, um, uh, uh, the Senior Center on Saturday. Um, it's karaoke at Westside Lanes. Chris Moon is going to be at DJ. And then on Sunday, before I wrap up my show, which I'm coming very really close to, Beethoven uh, Cereso, uh, String Orchestra of the Rockets will be performing uh, Beethoven's music at the UM Recital Hall. Tickets available at the door, and it starts at 7.30 on Sunday. And Sundays are usually the best days for a lot of the uh, university concerts. And so I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys enjoy your weekend uh, full of fun and all sorts of things.